Hello and welcome to another episode of Artery Bite Size. So today I thought I'd talk to you about pencils and drawing techniques and all of that kind of thing. And um, it's quite interesting really. So pencils are made of graphite. They have never been made of lead. Um, it is because graphite has the Latin name plumbago, which is very similar to the Latin name of lead, plumbum. So um, that's why it was called lead. And it looks a bit like lead. It's grey and it's found in the earth. Um, very safe to use. So leads have uh, never been in pencils. It's always been graphite. And it's mixed with clay to give varying softnesses and hardnesses. So the more clay, the harder it is. So the way pencils work, I've just got a bit of cartridge paper here, is, I'm going to do this down here in big writing, HB is what you use at school for writing and drawing and that kind of thing. Now the B is the soft side. And as you get softer, it will go from B, 2B, 3B, 4B, all the way up to 9B. Now going along the H side, it goes H, 2H, 3H, 4H, 5H, 6H, 7H, all the way to 9H. So the harder the pencil, the higher the number, the softer and darker the pencil, the higher the number of B. Hopefully that clears that up for you a little bit. And obviously you can do quite a lot with a pencil um, just by varying the pressure. Let me go with, oh, there's a 9B here. So if I went down really hard with a 9B and gradually take the pressure off, You can see I've got nice subtle variation and gradation. But what I could do with that, if I do that again, I could use a paper stump known as a tortillon. And this is a really large one here with a good point. But mine is well loved, well used and filthy. But what it means is that I can smudge with it and get some nice subtle gradation there so you've got that um, blending or smudging technique you can also shade in a way known as bracelet shading um, for example you always want to shade in the direction of an object so if we've got a mountain here and I try to shade left to right it looks very flat whereas if I shade directionally following the contours of the mountain You can see that the mountain is growing. You've also got other options of shading. There's something known as hatching, where you hatch, which you can do with the mountain actually, and works in pen. So hatching is where you go in one direction. The closer the lines are together, the darker it looks. The further apart the lines are, the lighter it looks. And of course you can go in the opposite direction. Another thing you can do is cross hatching, which is the same as hatching, but you go in varying directions. And the more directions you overlay, the darker the area gets. Again, there's something known as bracelet shading. So if we've got a circle, which is a really wonky circle, um, if I shade like a hatch, but curved, more concentrated where I want it darker, less concentrated where I want it lighter, bit of a shadow, 
I could make that work a little bit more with my tortillon. And I've got a nice spherical thing. Now, obviously that's all done with just a 2B pencil. So they're quite uh, versatile just on their own. And um, I thought I'd use this as well to show you basic techniques. Uh, but also, there are other things you can do. With an embossing tool, for example, which are the things that you can use for nail art to do circles. Sometimes they're called dotters. Uh, we sell a double-ended one. But this is where it's really useful if you're doing fine areas in pencil. And then you can come shade over. This might be the side of a house look. Because da, 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 I've got a white window frame. If I was going to draw a, um, I don't know, just a pole sticking out of the water, I could use this before I did the reflection. Put a bit of water on with my smudgy stick, like that. And I've got ripples which is much easier to do than to try and leave the uh, area free of white space or to try and draw around it. I couldn't draw around them if I wanted a nice, just clean edge, for example. It also works on darker areas. So if I, let's smudge that bit and maybe I want lighter fur or grass. Then I switch to a darker pencil. We have lighter lines, which is very different to if I do the same marks here. And that's white lines for whiskers or grass and that kind of thing. There's also something called feathering where you start with more pressure and take the pressure off. So good for grass and feathers. But the other thing I wanted to show you is how to draw things like bottles, glasses and, and obscure objects that are cylindrical. Um, and it's, it's quite simple. Work from a series of ellipse, ellipses. So for example, for a bottle, I'd start with small ellipse like that you don't have to do this many but I find doing more and I would do this lighter in real life like that and then all I need to do is draw down see I didn't quite get that right like that and what I've got is I've got a lovely cylindrical base I've also if I wanted to got the outside of a label the inside of a label the surface of the wine the base of the bottle a posh bottle with that dome in the middle Like that, if I was doing a cup or a mug, I would start with a lips. And mugs and cups are often the same size, aren't they? So you can then just go round bottom and then stick the handle on. If you were looking down on the mug, you could have it more like that. So you can see the coffee inside or the tea. Um, if it was a wine glass, let's do it here. Again, oval because it's wider at the top. It gets a little bit narrower like that. 
a few narrow bits and then it gets wider again and then you can sort of this is more of a goblet now but you've got the base and you've got where the the liquid comes into it it's very very crude the way I'm drawing it but hopefully it will show you the different techniques that you can do with pencil and just remembering the hardness and the softness of pencils um, makes a big difference people will say well why do you need the H the hard ones well if you're a graphic designer or an engineer you will need the hard ones because you want a constantly thin line whereas with the soft ones you can start with a sharp point but after you've been drawing for a while they become very blunt quite quickly actually and they get thicker and thicker and thicker if you did a continual line but a harder pencil is much much easier to control with a constant thickness of line so I hope you found that really interesting today and uh, learned a lot of different drawing techniques and I look forward to seeing if you put them into practice so thank you very much for joining me today on Artery Bite Size and I'll see you all soon bye bye